Hello, my name is M.K. Davis. What you're looking at is a film that was taken on the Australian mainland in 1973. Uh, it's a film of a purported thylacine or Tasmanian tiger. Now, the mainland of Australia hasn't had uh, uh, a population of these animals in the last 3,000 years. Uh, they're, uh, they find fossils but no living specimens. Um, so, you know, the question is, you know, what, what would a thylacine be doing on the mainland of Australia? <clears throat> uh, in recent years, this, you know, it's come to, uh, to the fore about an effort that some people made uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, to transport or trap and export Tasmanian tigers off the island of Tasmania, some to the mainland of Australia and into other parts of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I believe that what you're looking at here is a genuine specimen of a of a thylacine, uh, probably the descendant of of that effort of the of the original uh, thylacines that were trapped and exported. And uh, I, I I took this film that was in digital form and and did some stabilization on it, some enhancement, and, and there, I'll show you the reasons why I think it is indeed a thylacine. Um, if you'll notice that the tail sticks out straight behind it in a, in a stiff fashion, uh, a thylacine is is uh, uh, the closest relative to a thylacine it is a kangaroo. And their tails serve a similar function uh, as as to it's very thick and heavy and used to balance. A thylacine has a plantigrade foot, rear foot, that it can actually get up on its hind legs. And 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 when it runs, it gives it an awkward run with short shorter front legs than hind legs. And you see that in this footage. Um, and I'll uh, I'll try to stop it and slow it down. Now let me just zoom in on it first. I'll zoom as as much as I can without blurring the image. But let's see here. And, and I know when it's when the when the subject is beginning the film uh, over in this right hand corner, you can actually see some of the, the patterns of the stripes, you know, on, on the the hind end uh, from about mid back back over the rumps. Um, so, you know, even though the footage is, is, uh, 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 not pristine quality, but you, it's, it was close enough to the subject that you can see those patterns. Um, you know, that's, that's why I say, you know, uh, what I get, I guess the gist of what I'm saying is that, you know, thylacines aren't extinct. Um, they, they, the reason why they're not extinct is because they were transported or exported out of that country. Uh, of Tasmania and other places and they still survive th those exported ones and their descendants um, so it, it's uh, while they while they they really can't find a specimen in Tasmania uh, things like this come up uh, there most likely is a is a thylacine uh, so you know it's here and there uh, or, or, uh, across the island of across the uh, continent of Australia and and in other places uh, where these things went, uh, they see uh, situations or scenes like this. Uh, and I'm real, you know, you know, my hats off to the people who took this footage. Uh, that they had the wherewithal to hold the camera steady and follow this thing as it went across, and they knew they were looking at something very unusual. I don't know if you can see. The stripes, watch it start again, right there. And I can stop it. Let me go back up to... Here we go. You'll see the similarities when you stop frames like this to a kangaroo. Let me see, you can see that this is no dog. Let's just go one frame at a time. Now what happened here? Let me 
get back over here. Let's take a look at this right here. Now that's what I was referring to. That this is definitely not a dog. And uh <laughs> that looks a lot like a kangaroo and that's what a thylacine's you know, first cousin too. And uh, you can see the posture and the stance, the plantigrade grade foot. See the entire foot on the ground right there. The tail served as a balance. Thick, heavy tail. Uh, see how it holds the, four, the shorter four limbs up. Let's see if I can just kind of get up a little closer to it. Now let's continue on. Let's just frame by frame it. You begin to see some of the patterns right there on the hind hind quarter there along the tail. Pick them out there. There's another posture that I was talking about. This, you know, you can see the resemblance to that of a roux. All right, back out, back out. Now let's go some more. There you go. Even after it gets farther away, when it becomes you know impossible to 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 see the patterns or or harder to see the patterns, the posture still gives it away. You can still make out some patterns along the back there. Of course, the farther away it gets, the harder it is to do that. So there we go. Now, let me go and find... Let's see here. I'll pick another picture that I've prepared in this folder here. Let's see. Right here. This picture right here, and that this this frame right here was taken. Let me get on it. This frame right here was taken from that 1973 film. See that posture right there, and this is a thylacine on a plantigrade foot. See the flat foot on the ground. Uh, this was taken at the Hobart Zoo. One of the last living uh, known specimens, uh, recognized to be one of the last specimens uh, in captivity, there in Tasmania. And you see the the heavy tail stuck straight out behind for balance, plantigrade foot raised up, and you can see that you know this most likely is a thylacine. Uh, and and even though the quality of the film is not that good, the the posture gives it away. 
the, sh the shorter forelimbs, the awkward running style, uh, the planted grade foot. See here, you can see the planted grade foot right here. See, it's these feet are planted flat on the ground. Uh, the canines don't do that. So, uh, are thylacines extinct? Uh, the answer is not according to this 1973 film. That they still exist in places where they were were transported out of Tasmania too, and uh, may possibly still exist in Tasmania as well, and in other unknown places, you know, throughout the world, which is uh, something we don't fully know. Um, it's it is uh, heartening to you know to realize that they're not gone completely and they're not they still have a chance you know uh, as a species uh, maybe with a uh, more enlightened management uh, and and if we can recover some of these individuals we can bring them back uh, who knows but anyway I thank you for your time